Well, hello everybody. It's Brother Todd with your Victory Minute. I hope you guys and gals are having a great day and I hope you're off to a good start in your 40 days of prayer. If you don't know what I'm talking about, catch a few of the last minutes or jump on the website and you'll kind of find out what's going on. Church website, victorychurch.ch. But anyway, uh, y'all kind of caught me out here in the country a little bit, uh, doing a little bit of messing around. Uh, needed to uh, get some things kind of settled, work some things out mentally. Uh, I, it, it's easier for me to do that when I am by myself. And uh, so, you know, anytime you can act like you're working, uh, people, people don't know you're messing around. But anyway, I was uh, thinking about what I needed to do on this old cultivator back behind me and the fact that I was kind of getting away this morning uh, to, to share something with you that'll help you not just in this 40 days of prayer, but, but just in life in general, okay? And that is, you, you have to, and I'm gonna steal this from a great old preacher named Lynn Stevens, who went through a great difficulty in his life, later in his life, and, and he said this one day while he was preaching. You have to cultivate aloneness, but you have to avoid loneliness. That old truck going down the road there may have messed us up there. You have to cultivate aloneness, but you have to avoid loneliness. I was a very, very shy child. And I'm the type of person just in general that does not, uh, I, 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 I don't like conflict. I don't like conflict. I don't like confrontation. I, I also tend to pick up on where people are at emotionally. Uh, now, I, I thank God shaped me that way so that one day when he made me a pastor, I could laugh with those that laugh and cry with those that cry. But I can get overwhelmed by what is going on in other people's situations. Uh, and, uh, and, 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 and it, it can affect me negatively if it's, if, especially if it all starts kind of mounding up on me. So I have always cultivated getting away a little bit. That's really what this is this morning. I, I change flats on this cultivator really any, about any time I want. Yeah, we need it here in a week or two, but it ain't, it ain't nothing pressing. What was really pressing is I needed to get you a word out today and I, and I needed to just kind of set out and have some quiet and work through a couple of things that's going on with the church and uh and like i say anytime you got 40 days of prayer going on and people are in a concentrated prayer effort uh, all hell will break loose trying to trying to work against it and so i learned a long time ago because i have spent a great portion of my life by myself is that is that when i cultivate alone time with god because aloneness you're really not alone okay you're you're there alone with the lord when you're lonely, it can just be in your own head. And that's not the easiest, well, ain't the best thing to do for anybody that's ever battled with any kind of depression and that kind of thing. I can get left to my own devices and just in my flesh, I can get pretty dark. And sometimes it can really affect me emotionally. Uh, I tend to really want to isolate. I want to, I want to completely pull away from people. Uh, you know, it's one of those things you're miserable when you're by yourself, but, but you only want to be by yourself. Okay. If any of you've ever battled through that, then you kind of know what I'm talking about. That's when it's just you, just you in the situation. It's not, there's not a fellowship going on between you and God. You need the times where it's just you and the Lord. Now, I know all of you live different. You may not have pasture. You can go run into and play with a cultivator and that kind of thing. But you can have a prayer closet. You can get away. Uh, you can steal away in a moment. Uh, you can get them kids to bed a little earlier. You can have that hour, turn that TV set off, have that hour, uh, get up before everybody. That's the best thing to do. Uh, gets the be Kids never want to go to bed, but they, they never want to get out of it once they're in it. Get up get up a little earlier, get you a routine going where you spend time with just you and God. I'm going to tell you, your greatest prayer in your prayer life is going to be uh, just you and God. It's even as good as it is to pray with your spouse and pray with your kids and pray with different people, and that's all important, and it really is, and I'm not diminishing it, but I'm going to tell you, 99% of your prayer time is going to be just you and God. And you've got to get used to just being there with him. There is something about cultivating a time where you just are with God that you pull. And let's don't, it's not really us pulling. It's him placing his strength in us. When we spend time with the Lord, we just get more balance. Now, I'm not talking about just spending time with God. I'm talking about a need. 
That's an aspect of prayer. If the only time you pray is when you are when you are naming off needs to God or or, or wants, excuse me a minute. <coughs> That guy's driving by on that truck anyway. Y'all can't hear me no how. <coughs> when, when you are only uh, in prayer, uh, giving God need, want, you're on a one-way street. You're carrying it all. You're placing it all. You're talking to him. Frankly, you got to watch it because that can just become a mental exercise. You have to, you have to get used to hearing him. I, I tell everybody that's really wanting to grow in prayer, if you can learn to pray for a minute and listen for two, you are fast on your way to being a great prayer warrior. You are fast on your way to having, cultivating, right? Working on, making it better, making it smoother, right? Are you following me? With the Lord, okay? Aloneness, you're just not alone. And you're, you're consciously, mentally making a decision to, to be aware of God, to, to talk to God. I, I don't, when I'm out, I don't, I don't spend my whole time just talking to God. I, I, I mean, I may be thinking about a scripture or something the Lord's just kind of laid on my mind, or frankly, sometimes I just kind of zone out. But when I am aware of his presence and enjoying his presence, I don't get dark. Now, when I'm, a, if I just get alone, if I just kind of do it in rebellion, I just want to, I just need to be away from everybody and all that kind of stuff. You know, I just got to have some, you know, I, I bust all the guys at the church. Some of y'all going to start laughing, you know, you go to thinking I want that me time, you know, right? And I'll tell you what, I think the softest thing on the planet's a 40 year old man saying he needs me time. Don't pull your man card out around me and talk about me, uh, me time. I think you're a wuss, but anyway. But we can have that tendency. I can have that tendency. And whenever I do, I blast off, and, and, and it, but it'll be a dark time. I'll either have sinful thoughts or I'll have depressing thoughts. And it'll. And next thing you know, you've lost a day, right? One of the things, if you've ever battled depression or you're battling depression, is you cannot give it a day. You, you, if, if you've been in it an hour, don't make it two. If you've been locked down through the morning, don't get locked down through the day. Don't let one day turn to two. Don't let two days turn into a week, okay? And you have to consciously make that decision. You can do it. It is not easy, okay? I'm not saying it's easy. Uh, I'm telling you, when you don't want to get out of bed, you don't want to get out of bed. But I'm telling you, if you'll, if you'll force yourself into situations where you are there with the Lord, what's going to happen is he's going to give you eagle's wings. He's going to give you the ability to run and not get weary. He's going to give you the ability to walk and not faint. I'm telling you, he just will. He'll just do it cultivate a long time with God. Here's you something to do during the 40 days of prayer. Have you a prayer time where you walk down and you get on your knees or you bow your head or you sit back in the truck, whatever it is you do, and you tell the Lord, Lord, I got nothing to say. I'm here to listen to you. You don't hear nothing real quick. Use your prayer guide and read the scripture for the day. And then just sit there. But be aware of of the presence of God. And I'm telling you, it'll do something in your life. Well, I better get busy with this cultivator. Uh, and uh, But even while I'm doing it, I'll, I, will, I will be very aware that I am sitting in the middle of the Lord's creation. I've been redeemed by the Lord. He has a plan for my life. He has a purpose in my life. And he, and he, will, he will bless me and he will help me to bless others. And I'll be able to walk in that good fellowship with God and man, the vertical and the horizontal. All right. Have a good day now. Bye-bye.